welcome to another episode of NRI podcast so people hold on to your headphones as we embark on a podcast and across the globe with my close buddies and partner in crimes and with our special guest so we have today from the star studded sidewalks of los angeles amit then we have from the tech hub of san jose our own in house doctor surgeon jeet bhai then from the lone star state of texas and very magical animator vivek aka baba then from the maple syrup filled landscapes of canada and the poetic brain of garam chai anshul aka dugal saab and from the tulip around feel of netherlands me myself indrashish well for uh, today's guest he does not need any uh, additional introduction uh, we are thrilled to introduce you to the multi talented let's say graphic novelist illustrator uh, storyboard artist journalist man with many talents and many hats we are pleased to introduce you to harsha mohan chotraj harsha it's an Hi. absolute honor Hi. to have you on our podcast welcome drum Thank rolls you. nice <laughs> so harsho uh, glad you are, you could make here to our podcast we are thrilled to have you here uh, basically how we start this segment is just a free flowing uh, kind of a convo uh, we usually uh, interact with all the artists uh, let's say so usually we would like to know you know uh, i think uh, not lot many people know what is their initial background uh, from where you came from and how you kind of uh, sure came to art so can you just uh, tell us about that and then we kind of take questions from all our friends uh, present here sure of course well i didn't learn drawing anywhere i basically started drawing when i was a kid i guess we had uh, lots of comics at that time something which is not available to us these days so, like right now you we used to have dc comics marvel comics floating on the streets we found them on the streets we found mandrake the comics of mandrake and uh, all those other characters at the time and in bengal where i was living i live in kolkata i still do and i was living when i was a kid so at the time lots of comics were available drawn by very nice bengali comic artists at the time especially i remember batul the great hada bhuda which were my favorites at the time and then I, from that i migrated to tintin asterix when i was slightly older around 7 8 years old and by the time we used to get dc comics and marvel comics well not the type that we have right now but they used to abound quite a lot in batman superman and like at the time so that was very good fodder for us when we were kids and as for me i used to draw when i was a kid when i was 4 years 5 years old i started drawing i took part uh, part in lots of drawing contests and something which i'm also getting my kids to also do now so recently we organized one uh, at the kcc we organized a sort of a and also a couple of contests drawing contests so young kids are being encouraged to participate now in comics and uh, illustration which happened at my time as well about 40 years back so at the time we had lots of writing contests which we could take part in and that helped us write there were drawing contests there were script, uh, you know writing contests as well so that is something i partook in um, there used to be a library right very close to my house called lunch students library and i used to frequent that every day and i used to go and sit over there after i was back from school and sit there for two and a half hours going through you guessed it comics so it was basically you know st- started with lots of different comics from different types you had asterix mandrake all types of comics were available and i used to go and sit and read over there every day for about two hours so that pecked my interest in the field of comics and when i was in class 5 and 6 i started playing comics and not post proper comics but at the time i was a kid right so uh, one thing i remember very clearly was at the time uh, wwf was a big factor <laughs> and we used to watch it on tv quite a lot yeah. so for some reason i don't know if it's good or bad i used to make up comics featuring the wwe uh, wwf at the time uh, heroes in action and doing this and that and fighting and becoming superheroes and villains at their own time and I don't know why back in class 6 and 7 when I was in class 6 and 7 my friends used to ask me for copies of that and my granddad used to give me um, you know he was um, in a board of directors of one company and he used to get little little booklets and he used to pass them on to me for drawing so I used to draw 
comics in those booklets. I used to have hordes of them. And I used to pass them on to my friends in return for uh, the fruit juice that was popular at the time. I think also there were, we have Fanta now and those drinks, right? Coca-Cola and Fanta now. Back in those days, we had two or three other brands which became very popular. So they used to reward me for those comics with that. So that, and along with that, by the time I was in class nine and 10, I was, uh, I liked journalism and I liked comic. So I started a comic column for uh, the Statesman newspaper. It was uh, called Super Dude, where basically the idea was to take the concept of Superman, place him in my city, and showcase the weird and good things that are happening in my city, and place him in the perspective of a superhero who's looking at the things around him and giving his opinions. And along with that, I had a cartoon column as well called Shakespeare Onyx, where I used to take the Shakespeare's quotes and... Um, you know, convey the current events that are happening in my city at the time with those quotes. So, for example, to be or not to be, that is a question. So mm. that can be picture that I presented was maybe a petition looking calmly at the sky ring. When will I get the vote? Uh, Harsha, Something sorry like that. To stop so you, that uh, was very uh, sorry to stop you. Your voice, I think, breaking in between. So can you repeat that part after the uh, to be or not to be Shakespeare part? Can you repeat? All right. To be or not to be, that is the question. So yeah. one of one very popular Shakespeare quote. So mm -hmm. when I was using that quote, the picture that I showcased was maybe a politician looking up at the sky and wondering what to do. What will I do? Will I get more votes? What should I do to get more votes? So basically, you know, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. You have a okay. line and you showcase something that is happening in current times around you that you're looking you know, all around you and what you perceive. That's what you interpret with the picture. So that went on and, uh, well, I tried. Uh, I wanted to move into the comics field directly, but there were no, like, uh, projects and programs for that. Mm -hmm. So after class 10, I went into the, you know, uh, I was studying a lot. So after finishing my class 12, I studied English. I did my graduation in English. And uh, that gave me a chance to interact with lots of people in Jadapur University who were interested in comics. So there were a couple of professors who had just joined up, Tin Tin Da, who was the head in our department for a while, last few years, I think. And uh, that helped us move forward in that field. And after that, I shifted to mass communication in Symbiosis in Pune. And while I was doing that, I was working with the Times of India newspaper as well over there. And I did my internships at an animation house, at Star TV, at a lot of places. And while I was working over there, I had a chance to, you know, do voiceovers for lots of TV channels, a few TV channels over there in Pune. And that made me think that I can also do more than I can draw. So I loved acting. So back in Jadapur, where I did my, uh, you know, undergrads, I was acting in a play. I was acting as art director in a play. So there were lots of options open. But the one area which I liked a lot, which I wanted to focus on, was the field of comics. Because that's been my field. And when I was in Pune, I was uh, like freelancing for times for two years that I was there. So they helped me a lot because they allowed me to have comic columns, cartoon columns. They allowed me to go ahead, interview people, and write about them, draw you know illustrations or cartoons about them. And so that period was a very good period. And after that, I moved into the advertising sphere. I worked with Red Diffusion DYNR for about a year in Bangalore. And that is when the comics artwork, so about 20, 21 years back, that's when I fully went into the comics portal. And I was getting projects from lots of uh, possible clients in India and outside India. And after about five, six years, when I was fully settled, I focused on Indian clients only, only on the comics work in India as such. So in that period, I have worked one of the uh, houses that I've worked with a lot that I'm still working with right now would be Amar Chitrakatha. And uh, because they focused on young kids as the title, uh, as a main audience. And one problem that I faced at the outset, at the beginning with Amar Chitrakatha was that they were slightly worried about my style. My style where I use too many lines, too many, uh, you know, too many shades, too many uh, distracting lines. So that's what they told me. Try and get your lines down. And mm -hmm. at the beginning, at the outset, it was tough for me because I thought my style is my style. Why should I change my style? Mm -hmm. It's only because when I became slightly older, <laughs> just about five, six years back, that I realized they were actually right. 
if I don't tone my style down a bit when I'm doing comics for kids, it'll be very hard for them to make out the lines and interpret them and see them properly. So that's when, during the COVID period, uh, around about 2020 or so, I decided that let's figure out a process by which I can completely change my style to something different. So that's when I went in and experimented a little bit for about a month and a half or about two months. And the result was pretty good. It was also, um, there was um, around about that time, uh, Abir Gupta, one of my friends, he was trying to arrange an Indo-French, um, uh, you know, comic creators uh, sessions online where we were talking about the works we did during the COVID period and how we were trying to change our work or make our work better. So that period, for example, helped a lot. It helped me develop a new style, which I'm using nowadays. And um, if you want, I can show you. I've got some comics with me. So one style was used entirely for a comic for, that I created for uh, Amachitrakatha for their uh, client, IIM, M the, uh, IIM. So that's one comic. And after that, I slowly, once I approached that way, where I was digitally drawing and inking as well, which I had slightly uh, stayed very away from earlier, I found that coloring, which I was slightly worried about earlier, that's a very easy process. So right now in my projects, I try to use gray tone color as much as possible. Whereas in the beginning, I when I colored, I got an award for it also about a long, long time back but that was for a UK contest for which I got it. But in recent times, like I'm open to trying out new methods, new styles, because earlier where I was slightly afraid, where I was slightly afraid that if I do something new, it won't be cool enough. Nowadays, I'm learning that for different mindsets, for different people, the more experiments you do, you always learn something new. Okay. Ready to hear from okay. you guys. <laughs> Uh, since you mentioned about uh, changing the style, actually, I was mm. talking to some of my uh, other friends in another group, and they are also fan of yours. I think you might know them, Rajat okay. Mishra, and one of the friend I have, Sajal. So he was asking that uh, your art is quite refreshing and new. Like uh, we don't see uh, similar art by other artists in our comics industry, but uh, most of us, I think, like your raw art, like the penciling. So how do you see that? Like, do you like your uh, artwork colored or uh, rather in so what is your thoughts on that on that well depends uh, right now, earlier in fact uh, sadly in, in uh, right now in my work most of the work that i have done i think you've seen the works where i was drawing in my usual style with lots of lines and the new style which i adapted about uh, four or five years back very few comics like that are out in print or available and even if you if, even if they're out you wouldn't know about them so um, let me know when you, when you want me to show some examples. So unless mm -hmm. I show the examples. The problem with comics in India is that we can create lots of different comics for different clients, for different users, for different readers. But everyone doesn't get a chance to see that. As a result, they get to know only one or two comics, which is readily available. So for example, uh, I heard the same thing um, uh, from quite a few of my friends that they were not aware of my other work at all. They mostly saw the stuff I had done for Cow, and that's when they think of me and my art style, they only refer to that. That's what we've seen. But I have done more works as well. And uh, some of them are using that style quite a lot. In some areas, in some comics, I've actually developed the style a bit further and made that slightly more viewable, more interesting. And there are other styles where I've made the style simpler. So as in when you want, I can show some examples to uh, make it clearer to you. But yes. sorry, did I did I uh, catch your point? Is there anything uh, I missed out I on? I just wanted to ask, uh, like, you do, do you prefer the colored version or uh, your inked version of the art? But I think you answered it's very subjective depending on the. Yeah, in 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 the other in the earlier style, in the mm. earlier style, I preferred my black and white version because okay. coloring it was very tough. Yes, but right yes. now, since I've changed the style, um, coloring is not a problem. The lines are simpler. There are no mm. hatches and scratches left and right, and as a result, when you color it. So basically, I've practiced a new type of coloring, which some uh, creators are familiar with and some don't use it, where I first I prefer to apply the gray tone. And on top of that, I apply the color layer. So even with without color, the, the comic artwork will look like it's a gray tone wash. So it looks interesting that way, I feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. But right now in, in the new version, in the new <coughs> styles which I'm working on, color is a criteria. 
and there is one comic magazine which I've worked for and created a few comics for. This one is the Comic Sense magazine, which uh, Orijit Sen and a few of his friends started a couple of years back. So I've worked on a few issues of that, and uh, basically I've tried, you know, I've worked full color on that, and it's come out nicely. I hey, Harsho, um, I have one question. I have yes. seen some of your artwork and one book that I was reading, which is Aghori. And I found this art style very unique. So I was just wondering that since your early inspiration was Bartul the Great, and Bartul the Great was done by Narayan Devnath Ji. Correct. His, and his line art was pretty simple, right? And your way of sketching reminds me more of Sri K.C. Siv Sankaran, who was known for Chandamama's Vikram Betal art, and um, who was also awarded... Padma Shri posthumously. So I hear that you are that you are inspired by Shri Devnath Ji, but your work resembles more to that of Shri Siv Sankaran Ji's. So was this a deliberate attempt or a subconscious take towards your style? Actually, my style is uh, neither reflecting Narayan Devnath, whom I respect a lot, or the other gentleman you mentioned who worked for Amachitragatha and did not Amachitragatha, sorry. Uh, and did some awesome art. I'm not. Yeah. Uh, I'm not inspired. Well, basically, we are we are uh, comic book lovers, right? So when we see comic art by different different artists, we all love them. But for me, my role model, with whose work I basically, you know, try to stylize my art, quite a long time back, apart from others, would be Mike Mignola, of Hellboy fame. Okay. His style is the one I like the most. And I'm not saying I adhere to anybody's styles, but uh, the two artists, uh, two or three, more than two, the few artists that I have been, been really inspired by are one would be Mike Mignola for sure. And uh, the other artist would be another DC Comics and Marvel Comics artist. I can't put the name, uh, I'm bad with names, sorry. Um, another very nice artist whose work is very rarely found these days because he didn't uh, create too many comics, but his style the style was so intense that they captivated me. And nowadays, so like I said, if you look at uh, the outputs, the comics that are published by Dark Horse, I'm an avid reader because I think the styles that they bring out by not only, uh, uh, you know, Hellboy's creator, Mike Mignola, but the other artists who are following in his wake, they're bringing out awesome styles. So that's one style that inspired me. And like you said, the creator of, uh, you know, Bartol the Great, Narayan Devnath. So I didn't follow his styles. I'm just saying at that time when we were reading comics. So happily, uh, we weren't just limited to Bartol de Great and Monte Fonte and Harabhuda. We were reading those comics. But simultaneously, we were reading comics like Phantom. We were reading Mandrake. We were reading, you know, a lot of other comics that were coming into our culture at the time. And we sort of thought that these characters were also, for some reason, we just were under the impression when we were kids, these characters were also Indian. Although they are not, most certainly not. <laughs> Luthor and all these characters, they are anything but Indian. But we kind of felt the vibe that they were with us. We are looking at their adventures. And sort of so those comics, and simultaneously when you look at the DC comics and uh, Marvel comics that were coming in at that time. So that was what really encouraged me to experiment with the style that I used. But again, like I said, I for some reason, I picked up the habit of doing the scratchy, scratchy style. And the main inspiration, I would say, was Mike Mignola. Because Hellboy, if you look at Mike Mignola's art, by the way, if you look at his art back in the 80s and 90s, you'll see, uh, in the 90s actually, uh, you'll see the Hellboy style that he uses now is totally different. It's a bit closer to what I tried to replicate in mm. my way. But like I said, I am no way comparing myself to such a great artist. So it was my take maybe on that. Maybe my way of thinking that maybe I should have these much details, this much points, that thing. But like I said, we all change. And back in those days when I started, I made lots of mistakes in my art as well. I wasn't differentiating my foreground and background properly. And that came later with experience. I figured out that you have to make sure that the background and foreground are a bit different from each other. And one thing stands out from the other. So that all came, that experience lends us those things in mind. At the beginning, when we are starting off doing something, we want to give the best, but our best is not the best for everybody. And as a result, I have heard a number of feedbacks on my cross-hatching style. 
that you're putting in too much uh, effort, you're getting nothing. So I've heard positive reviews and I've had negative reviews. But in recent times, what I've tried to embrace is uh, there's also a simpler and easier way of doing things, which also makes it more interesting. So what if we combine the two options and you know bring two nice options together? That's the aim nowadays. So currently what I'm trying to do is, apart from uh, just comics, which I'm creating, and let's say graphic novels with a few friends, I'm also doing uh, web comics where it's open to me to experiment as and how I want. There's a lovely company called Optique uh, in Goa, and I've done quite a few web comics for them, along with some other com another company in uh, Delhi called Bucker Max, where um, uh, the owner is a, is a good guy. Sumit is a very good friend. And we've worked together on a few projects for Bucker Max, where we've created, uh, you know, pastiches, mad magazine type parodies of uh, different different TV serials and movies that were running in uh, HBO, sorry, in uh, uh, the Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime at the time. So that's what I'm saying. We're experimenting. But like I said, eventually, you were right. So when we create work, we are totally inspired. There are artists that I look up to. And like you mentioned, uh, the, the, the artists that you mentioned, I do look up to them and to a lot of other artists that I've seen across the way. But uh, like I said, my main guru, if you call it that, the person I received inspiration from still do, with his amazing talent and work, is Mike Mignola and his amazing creations. Because he was not just an artist, he was also a writer and created some amazing characters, which amaze me still to these days. Well, we are getting a flavor of Mike Mignola in India. So I think that's a beautiful thing because um, it's a unique art style, as I mentioned. Harsha, we haven't seen it in any of the artists because uh, uh, even in Western comics as well as in Indian comics, there is a pattern that is being followed. Like if there's a super hit formula, the artists are asked to follow the same kind of um, artwork so that they don't lose their readers. We have seen this extensively uh -huh. in, in the US um, okay. in early 80s and 70s. But um, but yeah, I mean, that's a different flavor. Like um, as you mentioned, like you, you have been asked by some of the publishers to tone down your um, hashes or the sketches and still you continue to do that. I think that's that brings a unique signature as an artist so that anyone who looks at it for the first time, they know that who is the artist. You know, so personally, I like it. I enjoy it. Having a different, uh, it gives right, a different. Great, thanks. Yeah. No, so, so adding to that, Baba, even I, I read first comics of her show was Chakra Kure Chakure. Uh, and I think uh, yes, yes, from there... There is no, yeah, it, there is a different altogether. So that's not, uh, so I can show, uh, let's see, I might have a book with me close by. So the style uh, which you are referring to, Chokrapure Chokrapure, what he's mm. referring to is the style. Yeah. This is the cover. And the style is, in, in this style is different. Yeah. So wait, I'll just show you. So the style you expect, <laughs> mm -hmm. no cross hatching, no, no cross hatching, cross nothing. Yeah. Simple, but detailed. Yeah, but but point being, you know, that signature art of your Harsho means, uh, you know, it stayed. And somewhere then the next book which I read, uh, or let's say I have read a few of them, but I think a milestone which I think uh, with a lot of uh, Indian audience might recall is uh, Operation DK with Holy Cow. Yeah, uh, lovely, I lovely, think... Lovely, lovely and I think... Uh, I would just go on mic and say it was your artwork which kind of put that foundation. Means, uh, story was Thank great, you. but but that artwork, that rawness uh, of that character, uh, you know, uh, and that is what personally, even I, when I like that kind of a work, uh, I wouldn't like to compare. Means, uh, your artwork is quite different, uh, which I have seen uh, even in Indian uh, art field, uh, that I have to say, uh, Horsham. But it's, it's quite unique and, and quite refreshing. I must, in that comic, uh, um, the script writer was very helpful. And uh, we were trying to experiment with different panel styles. That was nice. And the colorist turned out an awesome work. And uh, like with my lines, unfortunately, what happened is I'm always frightened as to what will be the result of the colorist uh, taking it on. Because it's a uh, tough work. If there are lots of lines and hatches and scratches, it's a very tough work as for a colorist. But for that one, the lovely colorist at uh, Top Cow did an awesome work. And it was very nice. And uh, that, holy, that, holy cow. 
Holy cow, yeah, sorry, not top cow, holy cow. Yeah, so Vivek's a good friend and the colorist over there done, you know, some amazing stuff. Yeah, like, let me interject, right? Like, uh, Harsho, Operation DK Volume 1, I even put a, like, review on Facebook on this one. Ashwin and your work. All right. I was, I was most okay. impressed of this one because, like, it was, like, five part series or something but it started on like the greatest note ever possible like the way that you have dis- like drawn dk and the like the astral plane where ayud is moving from one place to another like i was completely in awe about that right like uh, i was just starting into like holy cow and i was not pre- i didn't proceed it with aghori and other stuff because they had it was a complete full volume of 20 comics so i started with this one as i, I was amazed um, and as you mentioned, right, like a lot of people just know you for your work, what you have done for Holy Cow. And I am one of those, unfortunately. <laughs> so, and uh, so I I have seen your work in Aghori. I think uh, the one where you did the, like the origin of the assassin. Uh, correct, then correct. You, you had the Operation DK where you have done the origin of Ayut. And now recently in Alpha, when you are doing the origin or whatever, the first book of uh, Algebra, right? But it yeah, seems that was a very trend. nice one. one. Yeah, uh, uh, it seems to me a trend that in any of these, like I'll say, pan Indian comic release, they are looking you for a magic genre, genre, right? So is it like something, like subconsciously? Not necessarily. Just- I Sahil is a good friend, and uh, he told me his story idea, and I sort of liked it that you're building a character, you're developing a new character from scratch, and uh, the character whom nobody knows. So you are developing the character from page one, dhire se. Slowly, you're building him up. So I found that interesting. And uh, so right now, we're working on the second comic, the second issue. We're working on that book right now. And hopefully in about six months, seven months, that should be out. Because um, I was supposed to start a layout today. But I've asked for some time. So we'll be starting in hopefully two to three days after this. And hopefully in six months, seven months, the second uh, after that, it takes some time for colors also. So this time, I might, uh, you know... uh, after I finish the work, it takes a colorist some time to finish up the, the artwork. So I'm thinking of simplifying the style a little bit this time to make it more easier and mm-hmm. for the reader as well as for the colorist. But yeah, so this stuff is nice. But I would say um, um, in recent times, have you seen uh, any of my other comics? Like, for example, um, where I'm actually trying out new styles. But the same style, if you're looking for the same style, this is one um, comic which I had done with another friend in Delhi, which turned out very nicely. One of my best, I thought. But sadly, very few people know about it. It's called Destiny Week. I'll just show you. Uh, I think, I think this com- is the one. Yeah. 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 This is the one. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. So in this one, I had a chance to experiment with, uh, you know, the stories. Mm-hmm. Actually, the stories nice. were very compelling. The story mm-hmm. over here was very compelling. And I had the option to mm-hmm. plan with the scriptwriter and figure out how to develop the story further. And it came out very nicely. And Adam, uh, the, the scriptwriter, was a young guy in Delhi. Oh. And he was baiting the story in Kolkata, which was uh, easy for me. So I could go mm-hmm. out and take refs as easily as I wanted. I could ask people I met in the streets and some friends who were living in our building uh, on the ground floor. So I asked them to do pose for me for a particular opening scene, which was the beginning was always a tough thing in a comic creation business where you're, mm. the st- first five, six pages, the toughest bit. So in these pages, where this character is sitting and reading and playing a video game on his mobile, and then this page, where some young boys from his school, they come and they torment him. Okay. And to prove his point, suddenly, this character comes out of stone. Okay. So for this, this is a very tough thing to start off with. When your comic script is very nice, but the references are very hard to come by and you're wondering what to do. That's when I asked the people who were staying on the ground floor of her house. So that was a beauty parlor of, over there. And the young guys who used to work over there were very nice and friendly and stuff. So I told them, would you mind posing a little bit 
So I need to take some pictures for <laughs> angles for the nice. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's interesting. Some live drawing. Uh, <laughs> uh, exactly. You know, I took photos of references. So, for example, I asked one of them to to crouch like this on the ground, and the other one was actually pushing down on him. So those are interesting images okay. which you can take from different angles. Back hmm. in the early days when the artists were working, they had no option like that. Nowadays, with mobile right. phones, life is life for us is much simpler. So we can take you know references like that photo shoots. Well, of course, with AI, things have turned into a different skill altogether. But back, <laughs> you know, about uh, yeah, yeah, back, we talk about references like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now is a uh, AI has gone a uh, you know step high in a different direction altogether. But this, uh, you know, taking references uh, to help us in our comic art, this was a very, 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 very important step because earlier we didn't have mobile phones, and mm. so we were basically forward to references in books or even. you know back when i started off we didn't have so much computer you know computers over there to help us we were like occasionally we had computers in our hands but now or maybe some of is, the posing dolls that most of the artists used to use you know like the wooden I, dolls I, I, and didn't get a chance to use some of the <laughs> yeah yeah i know i mean over here in the art store if i go uh, there are some art supply stores you know like uh, for some of the artists i always want an articulated action figure so that i can draw like the the way you are saying um uh, basically sadly, for me what i do is this... i go for the easier yeah. way instead of dolls i ask for people to pose in that pose. <laughs> that's that's the best way i guess that's the <laughs> like, best way yeah, yeah. <laughs> my kids they're they're 8 years old right now so occasionally mm-hmm. ask them can you do a particular pose for me like this or for example there's a one graphic novel which is in the works right now is called lovecraft in india is being done mm-hmm. with a very nice scriptwriter jaydeep undurti with whom i've created yeah. hyderabad graphic novel and a few other comics as well so for this sometimes i ask him to do the poses for me so when there is an interesting scene where a person <clears throat> excuse me in one of the pages where this person is looking at a specimen on the wall and picking up something in his hand so occasionally i ask him when we are basically we discuss every page we plan do the layouts of every page and we discuss for at least 2 3 hours before we finalize what the layout is so during the session of uh, i ask him can you take references of can you take photo shoots of you uh, with some from your family giving the you know taking the picture and give me this reference and i give him a rough layout of what i need and these references these help a lot and occasionally when he drops by kolkata or i travel somewhere where we meet up we generally take photos with the poses we need so that helps as as uh, you know uh, as an art material as a reference guide i find this much more useful than a book of references where different poses different poses are given because this is on the spot you need a reference mm-hmm. you quickly generate it and uh, for me i have my mirror in front also in front of me so when i need a pose of a face you know making a weird uh, gesture or smiling or saying something in a very angry way yeah. So I only have to look at myself and draw directly from there. So it's become easy now. Yeah. Okay. Sure, I read I'm... somewhere that most of the anime artists in Japan they actually have the mirror uh, for their hand gestures. You know, like so that they can look in the mirror and draw the fists and the hand. You're in the animation business, my friend. In animation, most of the animation greats, <laughs> most of the Disney stuff we saw, that was done exactly. Yeah. The artists, yeah. the great artists, Disney, you know, uh, you know, characters. they basically got the inspiration by looking at themselves in the mirror and posing in a certain way i mean that's that's that's, that's good right. that's us making use of whatever we have at our disposal harsha sure, one question means looking at the extent the sure. artist go to cre- create kind of the, you know the effect they see on the pages you know i, I will just mm-hmm. go back to the age old question without creating much of a controversy so do you think uh, sure. artists should be credited uh, as a co-creator of any kind of a character because let's say in india let's say in last one or two decades uh, i haven't seen that much uh, across the globe even we have a famous uh, examples of uh, you know batman and superman you know how how, how those uh, you know legal stuff has happened but you know but artists share their own uh, pain because you know somebody uh, gives them a story uh, gives them some characters but as you mentioned right there there needs to be exploration to go and create and build that character so that people you know adore them love them see them on the pages mm-hmm. so i haven't seen that uh, specifically uh, in india in last couple of decades maybe there are uh, maybe it's a hit and miss for me uh, but do in you india think really, uh, 
India basically we don't have, we have lots of characters, but I don't think anybody is uh, cared to dwell into who's the creator, because the comics appeal that we have in India. So, for example, it depends which comics you're talking about. Let's say, for example, the comics of uh, Holy Cow or the comics of Amar Chitrakatha. We do know who the writers are, who have created the characters. Yes, and in some cases, like there are some common artists we know. So we know a Gaurav Shivasta, for example, created some of the characters that we see in mm-hmm. Holy Cow. Or for Amar Chitrakatha, mm-hmm. so for example, the Supandi and stuff. We have an idea as to who is the artist who first generated the character at the beginning. So yeah. these things we know, but uh, do we do we work think too much about that in Bengali, for example? Like you said, Patul um, the Great and Hara Bhuta. So there we know for fa- for a fact that this is the guy who created these characters because he carried it on for about forty years or so. The same thing. Whereas in the other brands, the other, for example, characters, whether they are superheroes or other like that, possibly the reason why uh, the artist writer that thing is not that much upfront is that possibly because many artists have worked on the character. Maybe because of that, people are not really. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the reason that the artists are not given that much of uh, you know homage, whereas the creators, the writers, since they've been working at it um, a number of times, maybe that is why. Maybe the writers are better known than the artists, uh, because personally, I like both. I like uh, the Indian comics that we've seen over the ages. So I've seen some excellent work by the writers as well as the artists. And technically, yeah, so the first. Writers and the first artists should certainly be remembered as the main creators yeah. of a character. I yeah. uh, isn't that uh, held right now? Are are they being forgotten? Is that what you're saying? Yep. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I won't say yeah. artists are being forgotten. Uh, definitely, some diehard fans or let's say some some mm. people having end up knowledge they recall that. But usually, I I, I don't think that is happening. Uh, I, I think there are many artists working on that character, so maybe they are also slightly mm. unaware. But yeah, maybe. Uh, see, if a character is like let's say forty years, fifty years old, like for example, if we take for example DC and Marvel, so we know a few things. We know who created Batman. We know who created Superman. But that's it. But uh, yeah. who created Wolverine? Do we know that? Maybe we do. Wolverine is a very popular character, but there are so many characters in the mm. Marvel universe, DC universe. So, like for example, in we were talking about Mike Pinola. So he created so many characters over there in the whole, uh, you know, dark horse uh, field. Yeah. So that we know for certain he's the main art, he's the main creator. But there are also some artists whose works are so endearing that uh, sometimes we remember them. So yeah. So I think technically what you said is correct. We should remember the the starting create starting artists as well of the characters. That will be a good endorsement. Yeah. So, oh, the writer as well as the artist. what I believe um, here in the U.S. Um, um, actually, India had so much influence of Western comics, so I think they carried, also copied the way of business being done in publishing arts. So here, for the longest time, artists were not given due credit. You know, like even for Bob Kane, um, who created uh, Batman. And then Steve Ditko for uh, Spider Man. His family filed a lawsuit here in the Supreme Court. They won. I think uh, the lawsuit was won maybe in eighties. I might be wrong, but then they start. The family started getting the acknowledgement with all the motion pictures and everything coming in. They they always mention like Batman created by Bob Kane right. or Spider Man created by Steve Ditko or uh, I might be wrong with Steve Ditko, but. Um, but definitely for bob kane they they give mm. the in bob the title kane, yes. credit yeah yeah so uh, so the royalty goes from artist to the artist's family if posthumously and i think in india since this entire business was a copy paste might be a copy paste would be a harsh word but then this this entire business came from western um, comic books to India, yes. so, they, so yeah, so they got influenced the way the business was being handled in Western countries for this publishing house. So maybe they didn't give that much due credit to the artist. Like the characters has to be owned by the artist themselves. 
Now for Amar Chitra Katha, we know that we have Dilip Kadam ji's artwork and then uh, Pratap Malik ji's artwork. And since these guys were famous because of their paintings, you know, like Malik ji used to have like an entire showcase of his oil paintings or watercolor paintings, right? And same with Dilip Kadam ji. Um, India, but then I feel sad for, especially for the most famous comic book publishing houses in India, who uh, for the longest time, the big comic book publishing houses, like for Raj Comics, right? For Raj Comics, um, um, there are artists who actually struggled with the publishers to get the rights, at least for the characters that they initially draw, like for Bhedia, for Super Commander Dhruv, for Doga, right? Um, this never happened in India. And even now, I don't know like um, if the artists are allowed to own those characters or not. But over here in the US and in Western countries, things are different now. I, I think what Vivek, was, what Vivek was more referring not to the credit as uh, recognizing artists that he created. It's more mm -hmm. like a copyright or a royalty point of view or yeah, giving let, them let the due credit as the owner of that character, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. So, so let, let us rephrase. Harsha, do you consider yourself as creator of Ayud or Algebra? Uh, for Algebra, I would suggest, I would think so, yes, because I think the character we built together with the writer, but I think, again, uh, that for uh, this one, uh, Algebra, I think what Sahil told me was the idea for the story. And the idea of the character no, came no, from the publisher. You are giving a diplomatic answer. It's a yes or no question. No, no, no. See, basically, for me, I'm an artist, man. Yeah. So basically, no, 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 no. See, see, that is your persona, right? It's, it's like uh, at the end of the day, we create. Yeah. So, you know, like yeah. for Holy Cow, the so, comics so you, you have created. Fight so I don't that, right? You're, you're no, I'm just an, I'm just an artist who's turning out work. In, <laughs> in comics like this, in comics like Destiny Wakes, for example, mm -hmm. or for example, mm -hmm. what I'm doing with JD where I know for a fact that I am, you know, a creator because the publisher, I know the publisher. He's a friend, Nitin, uh, sorry, uh, he is an age old friend. We've met since we have created a Hyderabad graphic novel about 10 years back. We met personally, we've talked, we've discussed comics. So for, uh, for this, uh, for, um, uh, what's the name of the publisher over there? So for Alpha Comics, so I've heard great, good things about them from Sahil. But I haven't met the publisher yet, but a very nice person, I'm sure. So for that one, technically, I would say I am also an artist, but uh, I'm also a creator. But the story idea from what uh, Sahil told me but came basically from him and uh, from the publisher. So they are they are in the stronghold. And I'm also one mm -hmm. of the creators. So I guess that way we can say. So similarly, for um, the one I worked on with um, the uh, Holy Cow, the one you mentioned, the comic you showcased over here. So there also, technically, I am one of the creators of the character because eventually the book went on to book two and book three and mm -hmm. amazing art was com uh, coming out from the artist of that holy cow. So we can only hope, we can only hope. See, for us, the main thing is create more comics. We want to create more. We want to explore more worlds, more dimensions. And more importantly, in my case, at least, I try to experiment with different styles. So the more styles I work with, the better I get. Like right now, there was one uh, comic that I wanted to work on, a graphic novel actually, on different aspects of my city, Kolkata, from perspectives which people haven't even seen it from. But again, the problem is uh, we have no publishers who are interested oh. in such a topic, a non-fiction mm -hmm. thing. As a result, even if I wish to do it, and I have a good friend who can help me with the script writing, eventually we'll get nowhere probably. Who knows? Sumit Surai, a good friend, so we both worked for the Shondesh magazine for a long, long time. Shondesh magazine was a magazine which was started by Satyat Ray's grandfather, carried on by his father, then Satyat Ray himself, and now his son, Sandeep Ray, is the main stay, is the editor over there. So yeah. I created comics for that as well. And mm -hmm. back in the day, about 20 years back, uh, one of my first proper comics was created for this magazine, along with another artist, friend of mine, Avik Kumar Maitra. So we created the first Bengali proper, about eight to nine pages of comic. Sitting in, uh, sitting in uh, my room and with a different type of pen, different type of pencil. So a new way where you take a comic and you make a proper eight-page comic from a well-known, well-established story. So that mm -hmm. feel you don't get. So you feel like you own it, but you don't. Mm -hmm. The main thing okay. we have is to create more and more and you know create more fictional universes if we can. Mm -hmm. Like one, one author I love is Terry Pratchett. 
and i would love to create a very fictional weird world like that which is a potpourri of different emotions and twisting things around left and right so let's see if that happens in the near future on the same Before line the, actually yeah. i wanted to ask if i mean you have like Uh, what is the most strangest work you have like which you have like uh, did art work for and you feel like it's a it's a weird strange okay. thing you have done, you have done like you are saying for that uh, other universe you want to do right but if you are right. uh, one. yeah the one we are working on right now um, called lovecraft in kolkata mm-hmm. has a feel of very very strange stuff because i get a chance to work in you know the story is set in kolkata back in the 1930s late 1930s so that okay. itself is different for me and then we're experimenting in different different pages with different styles so that's one option i got over here in one page in two pages um we somebody is narrating a story of um, you know uh, the age old mythologies the myths and telling about how one god brought one type of uh, you know persona into the world and so there jaydeep suggested that i use the amatya jagata style over there the purana style back in the mm-hmm. 80s which was used So that was quite raw directly it's quite raw we just have the pages yeah so we just i think it it's one of them uh, not exactly the pages it's the calendar yeah the one you're on holding that, on it's quite raw yeah to name yeah yes so not this page exactly but this is the style just show it again just yeah. show it again in the sheet show it properly so this is the style we use where you see lots of lines lots of hatching lots of details but mm-hmm. for the amachita katha one we used a different slightly simpler easier style the style which mythology is uh, you know those mythological comics in atk we are so familiar with so that i was trying normally i don't do that i don't try to copy different styles but this was an mm-hmm. experiment so it was something that i wanted to check out if it works or not and it it came out nicely so i thought it was nice jerry thought it was better than what i thought i thought in a way i didn't exactly do that because the cross hatching eventually came in in some places but jerry said theek i don't worry it's not noticed <laughs> So, so I, I, yeah, coming back to the whole topic, where means you were describing the how, how you take on the heart, how you do your illustration, what all artists inspired you, right? So, right, uh, comic drawing in India is basically something which is not school, right? So people learn on by themselves, and it's still We it's learn. not a it still means even in art school, people it's not one of the majors as you call it, right? So for uh, uh, as a creator, means I had this question: somebody who's who's new to this comics industry who wants to be an illustrator. how would you describe means how would you uh, mentor him means how should that person start because it's very rare to get such a creative person on on this podcast so basically i wanted if any youngsters are watching them to learn the whole process what all they should keep in mind and what should they learn f- from you well in recent times i've conducted a few workshops on comics create how to create comics so from the art point of view the first thing the first step for us is to you know know how to create a layout a rough layout and after creating the rough layout we have to plan how to create the characters actually the characters come before the rough layouts because unless you have the characters planned out designed an idea for the faces look like what the body structure is like it's impossible for you to move into the layout stage so first we, we that's when i do my workshops i first give an idea to the to the new younger youngsters who are learning a the process of creating a character second we move into the process of doing a rough layout but this is after the script is ready so the scripting process is also a very simple t- uh, technique but uh, like the layout it's very very simple technique but it has to be you know somebody has to give the information to young ones and to new ones who are starting off for a simple technique of for example left to right top to bottom those simple tricks if you don't know them so when you are looking at an image and if you are shifting the camera angle suddenly the 180 degree rule so few little little minor points which you have to always remember when you're creating comics then the idea of caption balloons of sound effects all those things a little little so firstly i give them an idea of how to do the rough layout and after the layout i paint them about the penciling and inking uh, you know the way the penciling is done and the way the inking is done and then the way the lettering is done now nowadays um uh, inking is uh, quite a lot of the time is being done digitally even i'm using my inking nowadays are uh, doing it on a wacom tablet so it's become life has become easier earlier we were using pens so gel pens i for gel pens at the time and i used to love doing it but nowadays i'm finding that the gel pens the type i like the cheap one five bucks they're not available readily 
So as a result, I had to shift completely to Wacom tablets about three years back because the pens I was looking for, the cheap, but so effective, so nice. Uh, I think the model stopped being made. I think whichever company it was at the time, uh, I think it was, uh, oh, not this one. I'm trying to figure out what the company was. I think it was this one only, Ocean Gel or something like that. But uh, this one was very cheap, five bucks. And it used to actually get good results. But the type I needed, it's not being available anymore. And the variety which is coming nowadays, uh, you, can't, you can't get that style through them. As a result, I had to shift completely to Wacom. And that's also helping. That's also helping quite a lot. But I'm not getting the feel, the vibe I had with the pens. But life, that's life. We live life. But you were talking about uh, the possible way to uh, get people to understand. So uh, for this, after the lettering process is done, one more thing I try to explain to the creators is um, how to create a cover. So when you're pitching your comics, or let's say when you're a youngster and you're creating a new comic for yourself, and you're showcasing your art style to um, you know a publisher or somebody else who'll help you, who'll mentor you, then the first thing you have to do is create about two or three pages of comics. And along with that, maybe uh, you know a character sheet. And along with that, a cover, a title to show your work. And in the recent times, I conducted about uh, two or three workshops last month. And in one of them, which was at the KCC, recently we had an event in Kolkata, apart from other events. In recent times, we had a lot of comic events in my city. One of them was organized in KCC building, where it was basically, we were looking at the history of Bengali comics. So uh, not, I haven't done too much in Bengali comics, but this was basically uh, the people who were organizing it like Pinaki, they a very good friend from Jadavu University and some other cohorts of his. They had organized a very nice uh, exhibition and a uh, number of sessions of discussions with lots of scholars and artists and creators about the development of Bengali comics, how it started back in the late 1880s and how it moved on and how the styles changed, how the works changed and what are the works being used nowadays. So in the workshop, I noticed one young girl who was in class two and she was doing it in the manga style. Not something I would suggest that kids, all kids do. It might be an easier style, but we should love our own stuff, right? More than God. So, but I yes. saw the way he, she turned out a comic, simplistic style, but in one page, she painted about 20 panels. And I was like, awestruck. Wow. This girl mm -hmm. has a chance. And so when I talked with her dad, I gave, her some, uh, gave him some ideas that she should practice more, do this, do that. So this is what we want. We want young talent, raw talent to come out from our city uh, and different uh, whole country. We want mm -hmm. that. Only one thing it is, uh, in me, <laughs> in our country at least, is, and my city, for example, is we need more comic houses. For example, sorry, uh, there is one group we read. Uh, sorry, yeah. show your voice broke out. We need, uh, what you said, okay. uh, we need? More, more comic classes or what? Comic houses. Yeah, more comics okay. houses, more comics okay. companies in okay. Kolkata. So, for example, not just in Kolkata, in India. So, we don't have too many comics publishers. Like, we have Amachitakatha, let's say, we have Holy Cow, and we have a few other comic houses. Some very new comic houses have come out in Mumbai and Anglo, who are turning out excellent work. But, for example, in my city, nothing. Nothing. Okay. So, I, I, I recently... Think, I, I think uh, just uh, sorry to interrupt. Recently, I think we invited uh, one of the publisher, Ravi Raj. He is uh, Bullseye. Uh, uh, like very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So he, he mentioned about like 17 to 20 publishers, which are very new. But uh, yeah, they will, mm -hmm. it will take time to you know establish and then produce the They're turning because, out nice work. Yeah, yeah. They're turning out very nice work. And I wish you know I could help from my side to them in any way I can. But I'm saying in... See, those are, like I said, those are some good big houses coming out in Mumbai. Delhi, okay. Bangalore. But in my city, nothing. So okay. we recently uh, brought out something. We, uh, quite a few artists and writers in the comics industry in the city. We tried something last year during October. And we brought out this comic magazine called uh, mm -hmm. So it's basically mm -hmm. a yeah. comic anthology of sorts, where yeah. you see comic art by different, <laughs> different artists, different styles different uh, stories, etc. So it was a chance for, you know, us to uh, showcase the world that, you know, in Kolkata also there is talent. Yeah. But still, uh, still also I, had, I, had a, I had a following question over there. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. First and foremost on that Kotha, 
it, it was quite unique uh, appeared to me the reason being it was the anthology mm-hmm. of comic uh, let's say stories uh, by different uh, artists mm-hmm. and uh, storytellers uh, it was total 90 pages right. uh, colored and it, all the stories mm-hmm. were quite unique it doesn't need to be superhero or something okay but but coming back to your uh, topic of let's say uh, things about kolkata i'm just specific to that because right. uh, being a bong myself and let's say i'm also connected to the hindi and english comics community uh, other side mm-hmm. so one thing i i i always hear uh, is that you know the reading culture in bengal is quite great hence you see any comics which is coming out from there it it, it has quite a good quality okay I means be the art be the storytelling it, it's quite niche uh, from uh, let's say uh, what we usually read uh, okay now now my question here is uh, and and people say that you know as the reading culture is quite good over there how about the sales because we have a perception that you know in bengal the comics industry is doing quite good the artists are well paid and uh, let's say you know they are well aware well off wrong, but, wrong. but what is the reality wrong on all downs over there so in bengal for example if you create a comic like i've created every year i created a comic for the shondesh magazine the one i mentioned earlier so i don't expect payment from them because i've been a shondesh creator for the last 25 years almost since i was a kid in class 7 i started uh, you know doing you know illustrations for them when i was at that age so i don't expect payment from them they give me a very little uh, dowry but, but we don't count that but if you create a comic in let's say kolkata you eventually get paid about 800 bucks 900 bucks even less a page which i don't consider as payment so that's not the way we should get paid if you get pay as that low basically what i say is don't pay as a result i work very less for bengali publishers because they aren't interested in paying us money so as a result most of the work i do is for clients and for different comic houses as well as different magazines in india and outside india because at least if i put an effort in and if i'm not getting paid that's why in bengal uh, we actually a few of us there uh, we formed a group called um, mad bongs so it includes at the moment we have a team of five so three artists and uh, two writers and we are trying to you know collaborate and do some work so we brought out a calendar this year and the previous year in previous year the topic was food of calcutta and this yeah. year the topic was uh, communities so i can show you this one this one right so for example Yeah, you're also showing. Yeah. Go ahead. You yeah. have a you show it around. Yeah. So this is the communities of Kolkata. I will show the starting page so that uh, people can yeah. relate. So this is the one. Correct. Um, Correct. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that's Charbak's art. One of our artists over here is Charbak Dipta. Then uh, one of our writers is um, we have two writers. Like I said, one is Sumit Surai, who's been a good friend, and also we have Sourav. Sorov has been working for Campfire for a long long time as a script writer as well as an editor and we've worked on another comic in recent times with Sorov I created a small comic for a Swiss magazine called Strapazine it was on the situation of Kolkata's trams so an industry which is suddenly you know going off the market the topic of the magazine that year, that particular magazine for the month uh, we did it last year was um, the the travel how do you travel in different parts of the world and so we were showing the situation of kolkata and india and the trams and the way the business was basically making the trams completely go offline and i mean the industry has gone down by almost 90% now so we interviewed a lot of people so that's what i'm saying so uh, right now we are trying to see if we can build some sort of a company some sort of a house like i was talking about uh, different groups and there is one group which was formed recently called um, avgcxr which basically is a way for getting the animation the video gaming the comics and the extra xr whatever what that stands for all the communities together in our city and occasionally we meet every once a month and so when we meet like i'm the only one representing comics and charbak was also there with me in one of the meets charbak deepta very good artist and writer and uh, but over there we have heads from the animation houses almost like you vivek so there are lots of heads over there <laughs> so head, all the heads of the animation houses the heads of the gaming community all the heads of the vfx community but for comics we have no company so we can't that call ourselves 
we just we yeah. just sit in the meetings and say yeah we want to do this we want to do that and we get no funding so so, uh, so harsh i mean uh, this uh, is a surprise to me uh, mm-hmm. this is the most respect vivek bhai ever got head of mission uh, <laughs> house so look at his face right look at his smile please proceed <laughs> The, like the industry uh, in Kolkata is so nice with animation. Animation is uh, one of the biggest cultures we have in the arts field. Like lots of artists who are doing amazing animation. Exactly. And uh, well, some of the some of the heads of the houses are good friends now. And we wonder what if something happened in the comics industry? Here? <laughs> if somebody yeah. started a company, it would be so good for us. But hmm. isn't that the same scenario with comics industry all over the world, oh, except yeah. manga? <laughs> I have realized, like talking to so many publishers, like we had been talking to so many publishers, we had been um, in touch with the uh, how the comic industry overall is doing in India, right? There are not much avid readers in overall India because people and the young generation have gone into visual medium. But uh, Harsha, when you are when you say that you know, like the comic industry is not going doing good in Kolkata, there could be one reason, as you mentioned, like the artists are not pay, getting paid the way they should be. The number one, giving up. It. The artists are the artists want to create. We we have writers, yeah. we have artists who want to create good work. But see, at the end of the day, they have to survive, so they right. need payment for the work that they are doing. And sadly enough, I would say, apart from a few, like um, uh, there's Shujog. who is a very good comics creator writer as well as artist and he has a comic column he has a cartoon column also comic cartoon column in one of the newspapers and his comics come out regularly in bengali very nice and he's created characters which uh, all of us know apart from a few a couple here and there basically there is no way for the you know the comic houses Let, let's say if i create a comic i would like it printed in out somewhere right no source like that in the city of kolkata at least unless we one option is what bangladesh did they formed a house uh, what's the name of the house indrashish the new one dhaka uh, right a uh, dhaka comics what's the one dhaka comics dhaka comics so they started okay. off from the beginning started off from scratch just about i think two or three years back yeah and look yeah. where they is from they they are they're churning out something like about i think almost 30 40 comics every year yeah. and they are encourage this from different different artists different styles and they giving so, them a chance Yeah. yeah so so we are saying that the readers are there at least in kolkata ah, we there. have west bengal we have the readers no, but the publishing houses calling. are not there so harsh quick publishing, question yeah, that's what <laughs> haven't you tried the self means these days in india the self pub, uh, self publishing is a trend right that's what we have observed that's haven't cool, you right. tried formed, that here we formed a group recently right mad bongs right. that's what the <laughs> aim is unfortunately what happens is that we have lots of ideas so there are five people in a group and five people means five sets of ideas <laughs> at one time you probably we are all work five creators on our right projects so uh, it's tough for us but we are planning the aim is uh, let's see if it works out the aim is like for example the calendar we did in bengal food kolkata food we were planning to make a graphic novel on that didn't happen we were planning to, we were doing something on different communities of kolkata we were planning to make a graphic novel on that didn't happen maybe it will happen soon but now we are planning for an easier way out where is basically we'll create uh, books every 4 or 5 months where each book will contain short 10 page uh, short comics so mm-hmm. on it can be uh, it can be documentary style it can be non fiction it can be fiction and you know an embedding of different tastes and cultures over there in those comics but one thing is the comics we are creating are not the you know the children oriented ones it's something mm-hmm. which children can also read but is open for all minds but that's one area where Uh, well bengal for certain and in india i would say we have to be slightly careful that comics the term comics sometimes it means to the younger it means to the, any any reader it means bachcho ke liye wo jo comic hota tha na yes yes so the moment you take comics like that in a way you sort of lose respect to the creators and you say theek hai bachcho ka comics hai na so Uh, it's like that <laughs> yeah. but even the bachoka comics which were created let's say in the old times yeah. by the greats in bengal as well as the parts of india they took a lot of thinking and yeah, nowadays yeah. enough the ones we try for example in yeah. magazine yeah so the aim was it won't be the kiddos magazine we had mm. lots of good reviews and we had some scarring bad reviews also which talk 
talked about my art and some other people's art and our script writing and said, what horrible trash. How can people read such comics and stuff? That's interesting. Yeah? So we create. Mm. The main thing is to not get bogged down and do nothing. Mm. We have to, that's why we are aiming, let's see, with the magazine, the next book we are bringing out, The Mad Bongs. We are hoping to explore non-fiction, fiction alike and bring it. But again, in Kolkata, the problem with comics is that when you bring out a comic, we've seen that if, a, for example, I'll show you one um, comic. I'll show you one comic thing. This is um, the comic which I created. It's on Netaji's life. Mm -hmm. It's wow. on Netaji's life. And it was written, script, not scripted exactly, but written by Krishna Basu. One can of the you show relatives. once more? Uh, Harsho, can you show once more? Yeah, we saw yeah. Netaji as Amit Bhai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Netaji in pictures. And you can make out my style. It's not yeah. the, the wow. scratchy style over here. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, it's not for sale. Uh, unfortunately, that's what uh, Harsha is telling. It's not for sale. It's no, not, so that's, never came that's out. what I'm saying, Indra. Like, See, there are so many stuff that Harsha has already created. We have Kom Katha, we have uh, Mad Bonks, and he also has calendar, uh, calendar, um, the community calendars. And then we also have that uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose's work, right? Like four works. And a Even city fun, like Kolkata, go. it's not being published. I mean, this is surprising to me because we have readers in there. Like if you talk <laughs> about Gujarat or uh, you talk about some other part, I have seen like Gujarat has a dryness of comic book readers. I have been in both in both cities, like Kolkata and in Gujarat. Uh, so I have seen like the, the readers, the avid readers difference. You know, like one community is complete. I'm not blaming anyone, but I'm just saying like how they are grown up in the basic household. So it comes as a surprise to me, you know, like uh, Harsho has created so much work. Sadly, there are no publishers in that city. And the best so uh, the way to market is you Durga Puja, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, you will have Absolutely. like so many people in. And even if I have to market something. Um, I'll go stand outside the stall of Garba in, during Navratri um, in Gujarat. You know, I'll I'll present something um, like foods of um, food of Kolkata. I, I might j do the same thing, something with Gujarat. Like maybe people start, um, you know, like reading, and that's the best publicity, best uh, time yeah. to market your product. But you are back to the question that we are asking: creator to be the marketing itself, right? <laughs> Rather than having somebody who is dedicated for, but I think that's that's over. that's the aim. Unfortunately, we've given up, and that's what we are planning now. Mm -hmm. So when we create something, yeah. see, nowadays we have the option of self-publishing. But like for example, with the calendars. So we want. Uh, so we are not very good at marketing, right? We are creators, so we can't sell our products that nicely. I can't go up to a person and say, "Hey, by the way, do you would you like a copy of this comic?" Or this magazine, <laughs> it's not in our mindset. We can't do it as nicely as, let's say, a well-known uh, person who knows the process. So, for example, there are people who can, I'm sure, uh, put it online in different different areas. So it's easy for people to quickly book online and they see the ads and come. So we are creators, right? So we can only create the comics. But it would be good if we had a hub, if we had a portal which would, you know, a company, a house, which would not only enhance me, but also give a chance to all the right all the artists so for example back in the uh, back in 2004 2005 there were lots of different artists and writers working in kolkata and we had a comic magazine at the time i can't remember the name it was a very famous one and monojidda was the one who used to publish that for us and i was there ovik was there um, at the time um, a number of other very very well known uh, comic creators were also there Shamik was there and a few others were there. We used to create, we used to meet up, we used to think up ideas, but eventually it got us nothing in return. So as a result, after four or five issues, we basically stopped. But that thing, at the time, most of the creators in Kolkata, they shifted to different cities. Like Avik went to Delhi, a lot of others shifted to cities to other cities where jobs were more affordable, more coming. I stayed back in Kolkata, but yeah, I'm saying that's when the shift went from my city to other cities. And that's when people had a chance to grow. Virgin at the time was doing some very good stuff, Gone Comics, Virgin Comics. So they were doing extensive work. They had a lot of good artists, great artists, great script writers, and they were churning out lovely stuff. And uh, you know, so that's what I'm saying. It, this is what my city lacks. But I'm not saying India lacks it. Right now, I've seen like the new companies which have come out, the new book uh, uh, houses which have come out, they're showcasing a plethora of talent, which I'm happy to see. 
one question also had i think a lot of your work uh, has also been done on a corporate fund which not many people know so let's say uh, i think one of the project by aims was funded then then i think uh, you have done some work for iims uh, then i think for economic IMB, times yes. or, or 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 somewhere i think you received a bronze award uh, award for a web comics on stanley where you featured uh, steve dicko uh, uh jack kirby but yeah we are such but but the point being uh, if you see these also let's say if i have not met you in person in kolkata i won't have been aware about these aspects mm-hmm. like you know True. there have been True. so many works which you have done uh, even in the corporate and not many people know in india that you know that that corporate comics thing happened so you can elaborate about that also to us since it's something new which we found yeah, i could actually share it on uh, you know i can i have a blog but i stopped working you know on the blog stopped posting over there about 3 to 4 years back because there was too much work coming in mm. and uh, mm. in the blog thing unless you're very creative and you put animation and stuff people will not notice your blog much that's what i found maybe i'm wrong but i'm let's see i'll try to open a blog a new blog create a new blog very soon in in fact the group we are doing mad bongs we are planning to do something like that very soon when we have time in our hands but eventually one one area which is a regret is i've done quite a number of comics for different houses for different magazines but very few people get to know about it and even if i let's say publish it on facebook like let's say before i met you uh, you hardly knew even though i posted yeah. the on facebook yeah. a number of times yeah. you hardly knew any of the comics apart from the ones that you had in your hand so exactly. i can tell you about to we'll see them so yeah. for that it would be good if there was some way that we could channel you know whatever work we've done and showcase it without uh, with maybe the people saying yes we like this style we would like to see more comics but i don't see that happening much you know i don't see I, the I interest think, being generated that much i, I think Is you have made some 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 comics on movies also i think one of was uh, padman meets yes. supandi uh there are yeah, quite a few yeah. those were done for much of and yeah. for others as well so like, yeah. basically we create comics right that's my that's the one thing i love doing i love creating comics whether it's digital comics uh, web comics or in print comics and stuff but very tough to let people know the what you've done so for example for hindustan uh, what's the name called it's called uh, hindustan times so there is one um, part of it called ott play where in ott basically they review the different tv serials and movies that are coming out in the platforms in india so i had a column over there a comic column which was doing movie spoofs and tv spoofs um but it was barely noticed the stuff i did was very nice i was proud of them and the person who was working with me as a script writer was one uh, researcher and one writer who wrote in very very funny terms the mad magazine type stuff but nobody noticed it wasn't noticed at all that's a sad part in india where you may create lots of stuff but unless you know there are houses you know which are showcasing your work regularly maybe that's one area where i made an error i should try and repeatedly mm. showcase my work but there was a problem mm. also the moment when i mm. showcased i shared a whole of the web comic together i got a call the very next day from the hd office saying dude you can't you can't share the full comic oh. online it's not, oh. it's not it's, mm. there are rules you can't do that so that made that stop me and i stopped okay. sharing there okay. only one image a time every week it was a week long uh, sort of project where every week i was churning out one comic with lovely script and that's what we want opportunities but again it's up to us you're right it's up to us to make sure that we promote ourselves in the right way but at the same time i would say the more comics we do the better for us better for india mm-hmm. yeah. so because of any question you have yeah uh-huh. uh, go ahead amit or uh, do i just had one like do you have any uh, because now uh, creating a blog is like it's free on internet right so do you have any place where anyone can find your work or i mean where yeah, where yeah, you can yeah. find it so maybe you can uh, if you go to google, you go to google right now and search hmm. with my full name or hmm. shamohan charraj you will let me just do it myself and i think or shamohan wordpress or something name. like that or shamohan wordpress yes, something, exactly. something like yeah so yeah. shamohan charraj and you can type in blog over there So you see WordPress about me, Horseshoe Comic Zone. So this is the <laughs> blog which I created, and also Lambic, the site it made. I, a, I was surprised to see your name in Lambic. So guys, to everyone and all our viewers, Lambic is the oldest comics book shop in the world, and it's in mm-hmm. Amsterdam. <laughs> I have been there. 
<laughs> and I was surprised to find Horsho's name over there. There are only 54 yeah, Indian artists. Horsho is right. one of them. Yeah. Okay, so nice about a few years back, about almost uh, eight, nine years back, he yeah. uh, called me up and said, we want to interview you and write an article on you on that. And we want to cover you. So that's nice now. So yeah, Lambic that's is one actually extremely nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think can, we, have, can, yeah. can we um, use that blog link in our video description? Yes, I was going to say that. Yeah. And so for the viewers, we would like you to go and check out Harsho's blog. Mm. Yeah. So like as well as the Lamp- people who one. only knew very few work, they can know more of his work, right? Mm. Correct, yeah. correct. Even the Lambic one, even though that's about five, six years old and doesn't cover the recent ones, you can get an idea of some of the work that I've yeah. done earlier. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Dukal sir. Yeah, so I had a quick, I had a question, right? To, in today's burning topic, right? It's it's being talked about everywhere in all the industries. It's AI, with AI coming in, even in IT, in our in, the, in our workplaces also. The the comics industry or in general, the artists have a very different take, right? So they are like, it's like some of the people are welcoming AI, but others are quite wary of AI coming in, spoiling art and things like coming in. So as an artist, what's your take on AI? And it's used by comic industry and other mediums. Like recently, I think it was DC or Marvel, which they did their whole introduction uh, using recently. AI. Yeah. So what's yeah. your take on that AI coming and slowly chipping off work from artists? It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. But I've seen this happening for the last couple of years now. So every year we have the book fair in Kolkata. And uh, for example, this year and even last year, I spotted a couple, quite a few covers, which were done, it seemed. There were artists' names also given over there. But when you saw the fingers and stuff, and the styles, mm. you can make out AI. Mm. And AI is being used, I don't know, maybe it's being used in comics also. Like recently, yesterday, I was looking at uh, a Facebook post, was it? Of uh, somebody talking about one very famous artist um, on a Batman comic, maybe, using AI. So I don't know if that's true or not. But we are yeah, hearing more of these happening quite a lot. And there are lots of posts nowadays on Facebook where we see AI, AI, AI all over. So which is, I don't know, from an artist's point of view, um, if an AI takes over our business, like I've, there's, uh, there are a few books that I've seen, which were done apparently with the artwork created using AI. So in, mm-hmm. in a way, like all artists, for example, the artists in the US, they are certainly going against it. And I would say, so am I. So if we are creating comics, would you appreciate our work? Or would you create mm-hmm. something, uh, you know, uh, you know, say hi to something which somebody has typed in and generated an image? Even though the people who are doing the AI, they are saying, but even the typing business is tough. You have to put type in programs <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And you put <laughs> half an hour of programming, so much, so much, so much we are doing. But at the end of the day, man, those it's who are art, we, create, we yeah. create something, right? We are using our pencils, paper, okay, tablets also, fine. <laughs> and we are using references. To create an image. Apart from that, if you say somebody uh, who's typing in a hand comes out of the blue and hits uh, somebody, a hero with a bang, and you see a picture generated, <laughs> which one would I prove? I would prove somebody, you know, even drawing in the, let's say when I do workshops with young kids and with older grown up people. So I look at what they churn out themselves without using, sometimes they use references, sometimes they don't. But the work that they churn out, it's so delightful. Is their own creation is what they're thinking of and what they have created themselves not through well of course you can use references from google we all do in fact for my comics i generally try to make it a lot realistic so mm. i use references i use references a lot left and right but it doesn't mean i'm going to tell a computer dude get this picture and draw it for me please and bus that <laughs> panel is done that's not the way and i yeah. would certainly say that if somebody uses ai art and creates a comic and calls himself an artist I would say very sad state for us existing artists and writers. That means you can use mm-hmm. AI also for writing comics uh, scripts. You can use mm-hmm. AI for uh, creating comic books. And maybe AI will give you ideas to publish also. So yeah, I don't know. AI may work that way. But technically, we have to look out for the writers and artists in our community. In overall, mm-hmm. not just not just comics. Apparently, I was hearing about um, this TV serial which came out. Um, the the Marvel comics was well, TV serial. What you were saying, world. the beginning, secret, yeah. secret invasion, secret, secret, world. Secret, secret invasion, the yeah. whole thing, yeah. AI, which introduction, yeah, actually, it looked very nice to me. But after I heard Pura AI say, then I felt sort of sad for the creators <laughs> who do <laughs> stuff like that. Nah, if you're using AI talent for that, it's sad. 
and in <laughs> movies i don't know i haven't seen ai in movies yet maybe there is ai i don't know i don't know <laughs> but in I, india i just wish that india in india more films on comics would be made like in the us for example in other countries as well the comics inspired the creators to take out tv serials movies in india few have been done so for example one lovely tv serial was made from one comic i think which shamik scripted and yeah, there was some the village the village the village the village the village the village so that's that that's such a good thing now that mm-hmm. you're creating yeah. a comic and it's coming out as a tv serial that's brilliant that's what we want to see more of i just yeah. wish that more of these things would happen i just wish more of these things would happen like there was one graphic novel i had done uh which penguin had published uh this was called ghosts of kingdoms past but and, but i think and, they but i think in the reprint hmm? they screwed up uh, i have that and how should i showed you right they the they the reprint uh, you recall the reprint they had uh, it, it the inks were not visible uh, it it was a bit of ah, bad right. quality yes, yes, okay but in that case i got an offer once uh, like penguin reached out to me and said that there is one uh, film director and producer want to make a version of that who want to adapt that film in uh, that comic the graphic novel whatever into a film and i felt so happy yeah 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 something's happening something's happening nothing happened nothing happened eventually but that made me feel like theek hai chalo let's create comics and see them in the cinematic versions if that happens Obviously. then you feel the work you've done the the characters you've created the script you've written that is actually paid off if more of that happened I think yeah. one uh, uh, Raj Comics character has been coming into a film or something like that. Or am I wrong? I think I'm not. Uh, sure. I think the works are the in progress. progress. I think uh, Doga Shakti was Man. Doga. I think I think it has been a decade, uh, decade. I think Doga Shakti was. Man. I think Shakti Man. Shakti Man. Shakti Man. Doga. No, I'm thinking of Shakti Man. Uh, Shakti Man. Yes. Yeah, but it's not Raj Comics. Yeah. Shakti yeah, Man. But Shakti Man is not a typical comics one time. But it's not a typical comics book. Hero, right? Yeah. It was a no, TV no. series to the start. Yeah, but yeah. so that was at least a good vibe. It made me mm-hmm. feel good. And I think yeah. I mentioned Doga. I think I was hearing about that as well, but not that yeah, much. Yeah, because uh, a decade <laughs> back, we all had our heartaches around that. We all have our heartaches around that. <laughs> okay. Jeet Bhai, you have any questions? Uh, Jeet Bhai. Yeah. Any... So one of the trend that we have observed throughout this podcast is how she will show his work. Indra will be. show the same copy right and this <laughs> this whole world of her show beyond holy cow happened in our last podcast when indra we did that with indra bhai's india trip right yeah. and we got yeah. to know that her show is so much beyond just like a couple of books that we have looked at too right mm. so it was really nice to have you here and your intro was very uh, like well and all but one of the aspects that i want to uh, uh, like ask about is what wwf characters you draw in your comics when you did it like uh, Quite because nostalgia back in those days yeah back in those days sorry i'm not much familiar with wwe because i used to watch it till about 10 years back and then the characters changed triple h was still there no, 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 but back right. in those the, days we, at the, the beginning yeah then i was know. dude i was 7 years 8 years old at that time <laughs> so i don't remember i don't my memory doesn't extend that far but they were like the uh, I, if i remember correctly um um and there was one Undertaker, three, hulk hogan <laughs> Hitman. Hulk Hogan was there. Yes, yes, Rick yes. Rick Flair, uh, yeah, yeah, Rock, Undertaker. Triple H, Undertaker. Undertaker. Actually, we watched, we watched WWE a lot when I was in class twelve. You know, in my first year, second year, that's the time when WWE it they raised the level entirely, and everything was like mm-hmm. slight acting, acting both sides. Yes, but the way they did the stuff now, that was like cool. So comics <laughs> ho jaye. So mm-hmm. like that. In fact, um, the one area where I did some comics on, which nobody knows about, sadly again. is when the ipl was started in in india about 12 13 years back, 2008 quite some time back right so before the when the ipl started i was invited over to do the comic for um um which is the one name which which are the which are the which are the ipl teams which started off the K- gujarat K- wala one gujarat no that's uh, kolkata gujarat gujarat which which which, which one? at at the time gujarat was not there right gujarat lions was not there No, Nia Gujarat, Nia Gujarat. Um, Rajasthan Royals. Like one of one of the one of the groups, Rajasthan Royals. Exactly, Rajasthan Royals. Mm. So Rajasthan Royals. Um, the the guy we created a comic on Rajasthan Royals. Actually, two comics. I did one of the comics, one and a half. And another artist, uh, another friend of mine, he did another uh, another part. So we created a comic on Rajasthan Royals, building superheroes of the Rajasthan Royals, uh, bowlers <laughs> and batsmen. 
And at that time, there was another house I did some uh, freelance work for, where uh, for the next three, four years, I was doing caricatures for uh, cricketers in four teams. I think Mumbai Indians were there, Delhi, the, uh, the Delhi uh, team was there, the Chennai Kings were there. So basically, every year they asked me to make cartoons of these characters together. Three in one as a feel. And there was a comic being made simultaneously about the great super teams, like let's say uh, for uh, this one, the Mumbai Indians. So a three page comic on Mumbai Indians, how they came to the focus. But that's the problem with comics, yeah, that when we created the stuff, it wasn't noticed. It wasn't noticed much. Yeah. But at least one good thing that was earlier on, let's say 20 years back, 10 years back, when we were creating comics and graphic novels, uh, the newspapers, the media was alert. They used to respond. They used to cover it. Nowadays, zilch. So when I bring out my comics, I know for certain they won't be covered by any newspapers. They won't be covered by any you know you know websites as well. And that makes me feel so 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 depressed and sad. That 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 feel that when you create something something new, you want to be seen. You want people to see it. But mm. when it doesn't happen, uh, well, some comics, for example, uh, that I've done, like the, the Bengali magazine, which I showed you, the comic magazine, mm. which came out, that was popular because it, was, it had a lot of creators in it. But for example, the comic, let's just say, which I created, uh, this one, the IIM one for mm. ACK. Mm. This was on where you can look at the style over here. It's gray tone and black. Black and gray tone. The simplistic style. Kind of, I can but, see songs yeah. with kind of. Yeah, I can see. So the style like, is one. I so for these comics, for nice. example, nobody got to know about, and no newspapers mm -hmm. covered it. And for example, this one, which I feel so sad about, the Netaji one. Mm -hmm. Netaji one, number one, it's not available. Nobody knows about it, and it's on Netaji. For example, that the guy we yeah. credit so much and we think mm -hmm. about so much, nobody knows mm -hmm. about it. Nobody cares. Nobody knows about it. The publisher didn't even, you know, let people know that this book is coming out. And it was yeah. written by such a very well-known person. And similarly, uh, another Bengali compilation. You're talking about Kolkata and the situation here. So this one, Chotu Oh, I love so, this. Uh, I love this one. This one I loved, personally. It's been, it was, it's been, I, I think, I think a lot of the stories are written by you. Uh, so it, it's, it's a quite a refreshing one. This was a compilation anthology of short comics done by me. Some were written by me, yes. And they came out in different magazines. In the Shondesh magazine, it came out in Bengali. In the Strapazine magazine, it came out in the uh, Swiss magazine. It used mm. to come out in German. And there's one comic done by Jaydeep and I, which came out the best right at the end. I'll show you a page from it. Can you see it? Oops. Yeah. Let me see. Visible? So, yep. for sure, one one uh, quick thing. I think we are mostly end of the time. Yeah. So, so I think uh, no. from whole of our gang, Jeet Bhai has something. Uh, Jeet Bhai, I, I give the stage to you. While Jeet Bhai, before showing that, I would like to just thank Harsho. I know in the beginning, okay. Harsho mentioned that, uh, you know, like whenever he used to pre give the drawing books, the tiny drawing books, his friends used mm -hmm. to give mm -hmm. give him back as a nice gesture, the fruit juice that he used to like. So this is something... Fruit juice, Coca-Cola or something. More than, yeah. Gold spot. Yeah, Gold yeah. Gold yeah. Gold. more than a fruit juice. Jeet yeah. is going to present something for all the lovely artwork that you have given us and yeah. um, we have seen. So Jeet, please go ahead. Yeah, no, before that, right? I'll say that I asked a question. You gave a very long answer, and you dodged that question. Okay, sorry. Good social, <laughs> good, good, good social media person, right? And as usual, right? It's always the onus of the fans to decide who the creator is. So we present to you our next installment of Jewels of Indian Comics. This is Harsho Mohan. Oh, thank you. Two thank of you. his creations. Uh, Operation DK. All oh, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the all algebra. So because that. All right. Thank you so much. Before, Thanks. Before this one, and Indra Bhai did a complete write. Okay. I don't know how much you are aware of. Oh, this. nice. Right, right. Like your date of birth of 1980 and a lot of things, asterisks and. Uh, Thanks, so guys. Thanks. Indra is good work. <laughs> <laughs> no man, right? 
uh, like the art that you have drawn for him right the one where he's reading a book and all the superheroes on the background that we used as a like thumbnail for our previous podcast right that inspired okay. us a lot right like, okay okay and i think right uh, thanks we only knew as a tip of iceberg and i think like uh, people like you right who have been doing so much and it's still active and the positive energy the vibes that you brought to this podcast right we are very proud comic illustrator right a lot of people they will come and yeah. maybe coming with right they are they are completely like thrashed by whatever is happening right because the recognition is not there and they have to strive to get that but you have always taken that as a challenge and you are still positive about it and i think that's the spirit that we need from people more and more right like so that uh, to drive to strive hard so that some or the other day success things are getting better like, things like, are happily getting better with the advent of web comics into the the yeah. comics thing things are slowly getting better and if we have some you know more print publishers in my city chhod do at least in india we think that moving forward we can always look forward to good stuff like the ones i'm doing with sahil right now i'm enjoying the idea of creating new comics so that's that's the feel we need the more comics for us the merrier and we if we can experiment in our comics in different styles even the better and that's what yeah. for example the magazines like comic sense and others which are helping us to explore different dimensions different styles the web comics we are creating we are we are targeting new new audiences and we done exactly yeah right and thanks to you guys for organizing nice meetings like this which talks about comics so nice good for us <laughs> no, but but <laughs> thanks also now, but, thanks for uh, coming to our podcast yeah. it means we are actually honored uh, uh, you know artists like yeah, you, you came yes. to our podcast and thanks again so oh, thank you wrapping up thank you ashok and okay thank you to you guys yeah. i'll be sending you this in my next video. oh right sure 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 let me when you drop by india would love to get a piece okay. Yeah. yeah thank you okay thank you, okay, guys. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so Bye-bye. much and to <clears throat> to our viewers i would just request them to like this video and share it with their friends and also check out her show's blog given yeah. in the description yeah, yeah. Exactly. i'll update it soon i'll update it soon yeah the old <laughs> ones are there last one was about 4 years back i think so i'll update it very soon yeah but, yeah sure thank you thank you please please have a look. okay thanks guys bye. goodbye everyone bye, bye.